Pedro from AMP Reacts, Graham from Barishi, how's it going? It's going well. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. So before we start and, and talk about the new album, um, how are you doing? How are you keeping your sanity during this incredible, insane time? Um, I'm doing pretty well, uh, you know, uh, all things considered. I think um, I actually had the virus kind of early on. Oh, you did? Um, yeah. So I guess some of the, the anxiety in terms of like, you know, getting it's been alleviated because I had it and it was pretty mild. Um, but yeah, still, you know, it's a it's a wild time to be, you know, doing anything, being alive, I guess. Um, but yeah, you know, just been reading a lot and listening to a lot of music and trying to be outdoors and stuff. Like, you know, I, I live in Vermont, so it's easy to be outdoors and away from people um, for the most part. So, yeah, just trying to keep the mind clear, you know, for the most part. So talking about keeping your mind clear, how, how was your mind when, when you guys were putting this record together? Uh, it was good. I, you know, it, it um, uh, it had taken a long time to, to get this stuff together. Um, we'd like kind of started writing some of the songs in 2017. So it was a long time coming and, you know, it kind of felt like, uh, we'd take, you know, two steps forward and one step back in terms of like, uh, you know, we had a, a singer who left and then some other people were filling in here and there for like tours but it was kind of hard to, you know, get someone to commit for like, you know, doing a record and then, you know, touring and stuff. So, uh, you know, there were a lot of loose ends um, that were eventually tied up. And so it, it felt uh, it felt really good to go into the studio and, and make a record. You know, it, uh, it felt like, uh, yeah really uh, got some uh, closure on some things. When you, guys, when you guys went to the studio, did you have already like a roadmap ready for how you wanted the album to sound like, or, or did you leave some room for creativity once you guys hit the studio? Yeah, um, we, uh, we went to record with um, this guy in Nashville called Mikey Allred, who recorded uh, um, that band All Them Witches and this other band called Yaucha and Interarma. Um, and I just really loved his, his kind of the sonic aesthetic that, you know, all these, these records that he makes uh, kind of share. And so I was definitely hearing that coming through in our sound. And yeah, we, we kind of came in having the songs fleshed out and, um, you know, all the parts there, but definitely let him, you know, play the role of producer in terms of like... Uh, you know, playing with, you know, ambiance and, and um, adding different textures and things that, you know, admittedly were not the best at. Um, so, yeah, I, I guess we kind of came in there with the, the skeletons of the sounds or the skeletons of the songs and, and let him, like, put the sonic stamp on things. Um, and, uh, yeah, there, it definitely took a couple turns I wasn't expecting, which, are, you know, was fun. It was very cool to... Uh, uh, and here's something, you know, that I didn't foresee happening. The album has a very eclectic sound. I mean, you, you can see some influences of doom, rock, black metal, sludge. All, all of these things are, are, are present on the, on the record. Is this a result of, of influences of your own tastes as a band, as, as band members, things that you wanted to incorporate in order to give more a robust and, and a bigger sound to the record? Yeah, you know, we've always uh, been fans of, like, you know, bands from tons of different genres, like, um, Dylan, our drummer, has always been, you know, a fan of kind of the more, uh, like, technical uh, stuff, like, you know, bands like Meshuggah and Opeth and stuff, and um, John and I have always been really into kind of sludgy stoner um stuff and so yeah i think uh definitely the the influence has caught up with us a little bit um 
and uh yeah this last year in particular you know i've been listening to a real hodgepodge of stuff so I, I'm, I'm sure it all kind of came through a little bit in the the final product i have to ask you this because as you start off the record you start off with a silent circle best opening track that perhaps that i've heard this year for any record because oh, wow. it just absolutely pounds you to submission and it's just uh, it, it's such a powerful song and it gives you a glimpse of what you're going to get through the rest of the record uh give me a little bit of the behind the scenes on how that song came about and, and how you guys decided to put that as the opening track thanks that, that's very kind of you um yeah the, the uh i kind of came up with that the, the the main riff that is like you know the first thing you hear and that was maybe like one of the uh the first few riffs for the album that we we came up with um we originally were going to have that song at the end of the record i think and it was only until like after we recorded it we were kind of playing around with the the song order that we decided that it would be a cool opener um and for a long time it was it was unfinished like we had the first few riffs but could never really um uh you know piece the rest of it together and uh yeah i took a i took a trip with my girlfriend to mexico and i remember like working on it there and and things kind of started falling into place um on that trip which was which was pretty fun kind of uh you know we went to like some some pretty cool uh like you know pre-columbian uh archaeological sites and i feel like being in those wild places kind of somehow uh took some influence from it maybe and uh, that worked its way into the um the song somehow but yeah the the, the idea to open with it came like really at the end of the recording process um wow well, who, whose idea was it i you know i think we were kind of we were stuck with I'm, I'm trying to remember it could have been john's or dylan's i don't think it was it definitely wasn't my idea i was definitely like stuck in. i, I love the fact that you're not taking any credit for this yeah no i'm, I'm you know <laughs> uh credit where it's <laughs> credit is due and i deserve none um but uh yeah i'm like i'm real stubborn and i was like no man it needs to be like you know in the, the the end or whatever and then uh after hearing it a few times as the opener i was like okay maybe maybe you guys are right but yeah it was definitely one of the other guys who who uh had that idea well i'm for one i'm happy that they won because i <laughs> I, I think because i i think it's it's a great opening track i mean it's so powerful it just like if you've never heard the band before and if you're discovering the band through this record and you listen to that track immediately, you say to yourself, I have to listen to the rest of the album. And to me, that is what you want on an opening track of any album. It's a song that hooks you in immediately and and, and uh, makes you want to listen to the to the remaining of the record. Well, that that means a lot. That was definitely the uh, objective or I guess. Initially, maybe it wasn't, but I'm, I'm glad. <laughs> yeah. Now you're objective. Go. Now you're objective. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's cool. Thank you. But definitely, they're objective. Uh, yeah. The the album to me had uh, a dynamic that it was. It felt to me that it was kind of divided into two. And Curses of Blaze was kind of the dividing track that divides the album into two. I felt that the first part of the record was more intense, more aggressive perhaps a little bit more heavy. And then the second part of the record felt a little bit more atmospheric, more melancholic, more emotional. Do, do you agree with that, with that, with that divide there? Totally, yeah. I think, um, again, like, you know, the, the track order wasn't really solidified till the end. And so we were playing around with, um, you know, putting the tracks in, you know, like, like having, uh, old smoke the really long song like towards the beginning and i think we kind of just decided eventually like uh it was cool to to get you know hit with a bunch of you know kind of heavy you know songs right off the bat that that flowed you know into 
one another um, without a whole lot of reprieve and then uh, kind of have this mellow stuff that was almost like a palate cleanser at the end or something like that. Like, you know, uh, like drinking some water after eating a whole bunch of chocolate cake or something like, you know, just uh, trying to alleviate some of the density. Um, and uh, yeah, the, the uh, definitely, I mean, that the, the title track takes up the most space and is definitely the most uh, kind of, you know, ambient and, and mellow song on the record. So uh, yeah, you know, I think, um, uh, I think there is a definite shift towards the, the second half of the record that uh, Curses of Blaze would be the harbinger of. Yeah, and, and how did that track come about? Because that to me at the beginning, it kind of threw me for a loop because I was not expecting to hear that in the middle of the album. And then you guys threw that in there, but it works really well. It kind of it kind of gives a, a chance for the listener to kind of catch their breath and then go in into the second half of the album. So. Uh, uh how, how did that song came about thanks um I, it was like i think i kind of came into the studio just with like the uh um the little guitar riff and then um i was originally thinking like you know maybe it would kind of be glued on to the beginning of one of the songs and it would be like half as long or something kind of just like an intro to uh just intro yeah one of the songs and then you know just playing the guitar by itself i was like man this sounds pretty um pretty pale it'd be cool to get like you know some chords behind it and then mikey the producer like has uh samples from rick wakeman's mellotron that like he used on tour when he was touring with black sabbath and so you know we we're kind of, you know, messing around with some chords. And then he like threw that Mellotron part on, underneath it. And I thought it was, you know, as a sucker for all things, you know, kind of vintage and Sabbath. It, it checked a few boxes uh, for me. And I was like, yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. I think we can I think we can milk the song a little bit longer than, you know, <laughs> 30 seconds or something. And so we ended up just, you know, taking that ball and running with it. Well, I'm, I'm glad you guys did because it, it really allows the album to have this nice little dip and then reset itself for that second half. And, and, and the overall guitar sound on the album, I felt was very powerful, very thick. It, it had a great, you guys had a great guitar approach to this record. It, it really felt guitar driven all the way through. Was that something that you, you had in mind that you wanted the sound out of this album to have a little bit more bite, to have a little bit more thickness to the way the guitar sound? Yeah, absolutely. I like the some of the records he's made have just had like the most insane sounding guitars, like so thick, like the those Inter Armor records and the Yaucha records. It's just like some of my favorite guitar tones ever. So that was like definitely, you know, part of the impetus for going to uh to him and uh you know, he 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 takes a real organic approach with like recording you know there's no triggers and you know we used real amps and stuff uh and you know all the songs were written on guitar and and you know were mostly kind of constructed out of like riffs being you know strung you know together uh so yeah i think it was, it was definitely important to have you know the guitar play like a a key role um you know, sonically, as well as, as uh, uh, you know, just in terms of, you know, the, the tool that was used to write the record. Um, yeah, I, I think he did a, a really good job. He has, he has this amp that's so sick. He has this old Marshall Silver Jubilee that was like, it, it did the, it, it, it did the thing that it's supposed to do, <laughs> which is cool. Yeah, it, it kind of give the, the guitars kind of almost had the sound of, uh, how can I put this to you? It's almost like you were listening to a jam session, but it was recorded in the studio. So you kind of had that that raw feel to it. It was a very natural, raw, thick sound to the way the guitar sounded. And I felt like with the tracks and, and, and the emotion that the songs have and the ways you guys deliver them, 
that that was the perfect outlet for the way the songs were put together. Thanks. Yeah. I, I, um, you know, I, that raw element was definitely really important to us. Like, you know, I've, I've always been, I love all sorts of metal, but whenever there's like a band that records something and has that organic element and you can hear the human quality, like in the music, it always makes it, you know, heavier for me. Like, you know, whether it's, uh, you know, Black Sabbath or Iron Maiden or like, you know, even like death or something. It's like when it, when it's, it, it has that, uh, that rawness that's that's kind of what what hooks me sonically yeah and this album you guys were definitely did that not just from uh the guitarist perspective but even on the vocals i felt the vocals were very intense very emotional at times and and you guys even used some clean vocals in old smoke uh how was the the vocal approach going into this record did did you guys wanted to get the the emotion of the lyrics to be transported to the audience through the vocals uh, old smoke with some clean vocals that that kind of threw me for a loop i was not expecting that and then you guys put that song at the end of the record so w what was the idea behind the vocals going into the album um yeah you know this was like the fir first time i've ever recorded vocals so mostly i was just you know trying to figure out a way to like uh record them and not have them be you know cringeworthy for everybody <laughs> involved uh <laughs> And, and, and yeah, so I mean, you know, there's, uh, we kind of like went through the demos a few times and we're like, you know, this part could be cool with kind of like the, the lower death growl and this part could be cool with like, um, you know, the, the higher pitched, like, uh, Jeff Walker imitation thing that I do. And, um, uh, yeah, you know, in terms of us, you know, uh, putting a lot of thought into it to be honest it, it was it wasn't really there it was mostly just like okay graham like don't do as terrible job as yeah you did on the you know demos so yeah just just everyone was trying to cover my ass for the most part um yeah I think you guys did a wonderful job with it, though. Like the the, the vocals to me really represented the the lyrics on the album really well. And I must say, I really I really like the clean vocals in Old Smoke. So uh, is that something that perhaps in the future you, you you'll go with that vibe and and use both styles, both approaches? You, did you enjoy both, or or yeah, uh, the vocals is something you're going to put beside you and not use it as as often? Um. You know, uh, I'm definitely not as good at doing, I mean, not that I'm, I'm good at doing the uh, <laughs> distorted vocals, but it, it, it's tough for me to do the, the clean vocals. Like, those took more takes. Like, I was definitely real pitchy and stuff. I mean, I like the, the final product, but um, it might be a tedious process to try to, you know, do longer um, passages with those. But, you know, I'm willing to practice, you know, I, I enjoyed, you know, having some, some dynamics with the, the different vocal approaches, you know? So, so I guess it's safe to say you guys are going to be doing old smoke line. Uh, I, you know, yeah, I think we are actually going to do it. We added a, another guitarist whose uh, voice is a lot deeper than mine and he can kind of hit all those low notes, all the clean low notes. Um, that like, like I had to record that like in the morning or something when I was kind of groggy so I could hit the like the lower notes. But apparently he says he can hit all those notes live. So I'm going to I'm going to trust him. But uh, uh, <laughs> I, I suggest that you check it before. But like, you know, like uh, do, a, do a, a practice run before. We probably should. That 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 does seem like uh, some uh, wisdom for sure. <laughs> So with the album coming out uh, April 24th on Season of Mist, and now us being in the middle of this freaking quarantine with this outbreak happening, uh, it, it makes it impossible for you guys to hit the road, to do a tour, to do a, like, you know, uh, album release party, any of these things that perhaps would be in your plans. Uh, what are you thinking uh, about as far as, as promoting the record during this uh this horrible time period. 
Yeah, it, it's uh, it's strange. It's tough. I mean, like we're very lucky in that everyone at Season Mist is is super cool and very supportive, and they're you know they already kind of think outside of the box. Um, so like today we did a like a live uh stream listening party, and I think we're gonna be doing like an album release show that's also a live stream thing at a local venue here in Vermont. Um. But yeah, I mean, you know, there's not a whole lot of precedent for <laughs> releasing, you know, uh, records during a pandemic. So, you know, <laughs> uh, road breakers. yeah, yeah, we're, we're, we're kind of trying to figure it out the, the, you know, we were really, we were ready to let the, um, get out on the road and start touring. And, you know, obviously all the, the tours are canceled and stuff for the foreseeable future. So I guess, you know. It's going to be a lot more of us uh, behind the computer typing away, you know, or something, trying to get at uh, music listeners that way. Uh, yeah, I mean, it makes things a little bit difficult from that perspective. But on the other note is with everybody stuck at home uh, with Netflix to watch, releasing an album now, maybe it's not such a bad idea. It gives people something to listen to. That's what I'm hoping. That's what I'm, you know, I'm hoping that... Uh, you know, there will be some people who, uh, you know, maybe having a slew of, of new records uh, will be a, you know, a help to their uh, uh, mental health or something, you know, like. Uh, I always like hearing new records. I'm I'm happy when I like uh, uh, get to hear new stuff from bands that, you know, maybe I'm not familiar with. So hopefully uh, there's some people out there. Uh, that you know this will tickle their fancy and it'll kill an hour or two yeah wow that that's an expression that i normally use quite a bit tickle your fancy i think you're the first guy besides me that i've ever heard saying that expression so, <laughs> so that's go. amazing that's amazing right there well I, I can tell you this much i think the album is amazing old smoke is a great record and for anybody i mean regardless of pandemic or not this is an album that i think everybody should check out uh, be, because it, it's a great sounding record. It's a great record all around, uh, great tracks. And, and like I said, it has one of my favorite opening tracks of, of a record that I've heard this year, that silent circle is just like that song just pounded me into submission. So I, I, I cannot say enough. I, I really think everybody should go and check out the record and support you guys, uh, during these difficult times. That means so much. Thank you so much. Well, Graham, thank you very much for your time today. I really appreciate it. Best of luck with the, with the album release. Uh, I think you guys are going to do amazing with this record. And uh, keep practicing those clean vocals. So maybe uh, maybe next record, maybe next record, you can have like a 12-minute track all with clean vocals. Yeah, it'll be, it'll be dedicated to you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, that would be amazing. That would be amazing. And the next time you guys come to Toronto, uh, I can be in the front row. Uh, shirtless, uh, screaming <laughs> thumbs up. <laughs> Perfect. Awesome. Well, I'll look forward to it. All right, man. Thanks a lot. Hey, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Uh, me, thank you.